Hello there, Year 3, and welcome to your guided reading lesson today. Okay, before we begin, I've got some questions that I'd like to ask you about yesterday's text. You're going to be using those inference skills to help you today, and those retrieval skills that you've already learned. So, my questions are, how do you think Flatland feels about receiving Lila's letter? Do you think Lila was right to be angry with her father? I don't want you to explain your reasoning there. Do you think Tulak is a good friend to Lila? What evidence is there for this and against this? And what do you think will happen in the story next? Pause the video here. Have a go at answering those questions now. Welcome back. Okay, shall we move on? Excellent, let's start our, our lesson today. So today, our objective is to infer meaning from what is stated and implied. So that means, um, using the evidence, put it together and working out what is actually happening, what we think is happening. So to do this, to be successful, you're going to identify keywords in the question. You're going to think carefully about how a character feels from their actions and their behaviours. You're going to think about the hidden meanings, the things that we can't see, the things are not, that are not stated. And you're going to be able to say whether something is stated that means it's put in the text, it's there, the evidence is there, we can retrieve it, or it's implied, or we need to think about it. What is the writer trying to tell me? Okay, let's move on then. So do you remember this dog yesterday, inference with Iggy? Okay, so inference can be a really tricky skill, right? It's the process where we make conclusions based on evidence and reasoning. So it's where we think, hmm, I think this is what's happening now. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky because it's not explicit. It means it's not written down clearly in that text. You can't see it and retrieve that information from the text. You need to think, hmm, is it this or is it that? It's your opinion. It's what you think the writer is trying to tell you. So, for example, I have one here. The man looks sad as he watched the families play on the beach. So in this sentence, we know that the man is feeling, um, is how he's feeling because the word sad is explicit. We can retrieve that from the text. And that's clear for us to read. Hmm. But why is he sad? What's the reasoning? Let's find out. So let's look at a similar sentence where it's implied how the man is feeling. So it's implied, it's not explicitly there. The old man's eyes filled with tears as a wave of memories from the past washed over him. He remembered his son playing on this very same beach 40 years ago. A terrible day he would never erase from his memory. So remember, we need to be detectives now. And we need to use evidence to build up our reason of how the man is feeling. So the first piece of evidence that we have is eyes filled with tears. So this could be tears of happiness or tears of sadness. We still don't have enough evidence to know, is it sadness or happiness? So let's move along. So the next part of the evidence that we have is his son playing on the beach. Maybe it is tears of happiness because he's remembering all of those lovely memories of his son playing on a beach when he was a little boy. Yes, maybe it is that. What do you think? Should we gather a little bit more info, um, evidence just to check? So the last part of the evidence that we're going to use to build our picture is a terrible day. Hmm. That is the final piece in our clues to tell us and help us to infer what that man is feeling. A terrible day confirms that the man is more likely to be feeling sad and that it probably has something to do with his son and I'm wondering if something bad happened to his son at the beach. So his eyes filled with tears, his son playing on the beach, but the terrible day, those three key pieces of evidence together, I can infer that possibly his son had an accident at the beach and possibly something really bad happened and the man is feeling really sad about it. What did you think? Excellent, let's move on, shall we? So I've got one we're gonna look at together. So I've got some questions that I will need you to answer 
and they're on the sheet. And what we're going to do, we're going to read it together. And then you're going to have a go at answering these questions. I'm going to come back together and talk it through. So I'm going to read it to you first. And then I'm going to get you to pause the video and answer the questions. Slowly and carefully, she began to open the box. Her heart was fluttering like a butterfly. Please, oh please, let it be what I wish for, she thought. But just then, she had a sudden thought. What if it wasn't what she'd wish for? And instead, Mum and Dad had got us something completely different. Would she have pretended to like it? She hesitated for a moment and then began to open the box wider until she saw a tail swishing back and forth. She opened the lid and let out a high-pitched squeal. Mum and Dad, who had been waiting eagerly in the background, smiled widely. So, there's some questions here. You will need to find that evidence, build that evidence up to write down what you think is happening. Remember, you're going to infer. You are using your inference skills, so you are building that evidence to create an opinion of what is happening in the text. Pause the video here. Have a go at answering those questions now. Okay, welcome back. So, what do you think the girl was hoping to find in the box? Well, there's a couple of pieces of evidence that I found there. I think she was hoping to find a puppy. And the reason why I think she was hoping to find a puppy, often when people give puppies as gifts, they come in a box, don't they? So she slowly and carefully began to open the box. It made me think, I think she's hoping for a puppy. And a little bit later on, the evidence of the tail swishing back and forth confirms what my thoughts were, my inference skill there. Why do you think the girl had the box in the first place? Well, often, if puppies come in a box, if puppies are given to somebody, they often come into a box because puppies are very small and they need to be in a cosy, quiet place. Now, did the girl like what she found in the box? I think she did. Let's have a look at the evidence there. Well, when she opened the box, she let out a high-pitched squeal. That piece of evidence tells me that she was really excited. So did she like what she found in the box? Yes, she did, because she seemed excited and really overwhelmed with joy. Why did mum and dad wait eagerly and how did they feel when she opened the box? Well, they were waiting eagerly in the background because they were anxious to see whether she liked the, the surprise or not. And then at the end, they smiled widely that tells me that they were really happy with their choice of what they got her. They were really pleased that they got her a puppy. What do you think the story is going to is likely to going to be about? I think it's going to be about the little girl and her new puppy, and all the wonderful things that they're going to get up to, and the new tricks that they're going to teach the the girl's going to teach the puppy. What did you think? Okay, let's move on. So. Iggy might ask things like, what makes you think, given evidence to support your answer, what impressions were given about? Why did the character behave like this? How does the character feel about this situation? How do you know? Why is something important? Explain your answer. And which character would you most likely to meet and why? Okay, should we get on now to reading our story? I'm going to pull my camera picture right down there. And do you remember, at the end of yesterday, uh, Lila had run off, hadn't she? And uh, Lockland and Chulak were going to go after her. And Chulak was going to bring the white elephant and meet Lockland at night time. And they were going to go and find Lila together. No time to explain now. Just bring one to the gate tonight. And Lockman had to make do with that. He went back to the workshop feeling heavy hearted. All this while, Lila had been making her way through the jungle and to the sacred, towards the sacred volcano. Mount Meripai lay far to the north and she'd never seen it until late that afternoon. She came to a bend in the jungle path and found herself beside the river. 
the size of the great mountain made her gasp. <gasps> it was far away on the very edge of the world. But even so, it reached halfway up the sky with the bare sides rising in a perfect cone to the glowing crater at the top. Now a crater is a dip out in the earth. So often you get craters when things hit the earth and make a dip. Um, I've lost my place, sorry. <laughs> That's it. From time to time, the fire spirits who lived there rumbled angrily underground and threw boiling rocks high into the air. A plume of eternal smoke drifted from the summit to join the clouds. How can I ever get there, she wondered and felt her heart quail but she had been chosen to make the journey and she could hardly turn back when she'd only just begun. She shifted her bundle from one shoulder to the other and walked on. The jungle was a noisy place and monkeys gibbered in the trees and parrots screeched and crocodiles snapped their jaws in the river. And every so often Lila had to step carefully over a snake sleeping in the sun and once she heard the roar of a mighty tiger. There was no one to be seen except some fishermen laboriously rowing their boat across from the other side of the river. She stopped and watched as they brought their boat in toward the bank where she was standing. They weren't making very good progress. I'm going to stop there. Now, the word heavy hearted. So in the story, we had the quote, he went back to the workshop feeling heavy hearted. And heavy hearted is an adjective. He fi ha ted. Heavy hearted. And the definition of that word is the feeling of being depressed or melancholy. He's down and sad. The sight of his friends playing without him made him heavy hearted. Synonyms for that word are sad, sorrowful, dejected, down, depressed. It's a good word to use when you're feeling quite. Oh, down and upset about something. I feel very heavy hearted. Okay, so there were six or seven of them. Okay, let's continue. There were six or seven of them and their oars were getting all in one another's ways. As she was, watched one of the fishermen miss the water completely with his oar, which swung around and clumped the other fisherman on the head. The, that fisherman turned around and punched the first one, who fell off his seat with a squeal and dropped the oar into the water. One of the others tried to grab it, but instead he fell out of the boat, which rocked so violently that the others all cried out in alarm and grabbed the sides. The man had fallen out was splashing and spluttering as he tried to climb back in the boat, and all the crocodiles basking in the shallows looked up, interested. Lila caught her breath in alarm. <gasps> But the fisherman was so helpless, she could hardly stop herself from laughing. Because when the man in the water leaned over the gunwale, all the men in the boat leaned over that side to help him. And the boat tipped over so far, they all nearly fell in two. Then suddenly they realised what was happening and let go. And then the boat tipped the other way. And then they all fell on their backs. And the crocodiles slid off the sandbanks and began to swim towards them.